And welcome to the online church service for AIM Anglicans in Manningham. We're coming to you live this morning at 10 o'clock from St. Timothy's in Boleyn. My name is Michael Goodluck and I'm the vicar of St. Mark's in Templestowe. And for those of you that are joining us later on and from further afield, uh, it's not necessarily good morning, but it's a very warm welcome. For us here in the Southern Hemisphere, this is the shortest day of the year. So we're solstering here and uh, we've come to worship, not the S-U-N, but the S-O-N. And we're going to do that in the service of prayer, praise and proclamation from our Anglican prayer book for Australia. And you'll see that uh, whenever the words on the screen in the bottom corner are in white, that's for the leadership, for whoever's up the front here, myself or the Bible readers or Dietrich as he preaches to us this morning. And if the words are in that, that softer yellow colour, say for the words, the words of the hymns as well as the words of some of the prayers like the Lord's Prayer, then please join in at home and enjoy and be uplifted by this service of prayer, praise and proclamation. So a, a word of scripture, a great word of scripture to bring us into this service from St Paul who writes to the church in Colossae, such a great letter that everyone said, we've got to keep this. This is inspired by God and it's become part of our Bible. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Well, let's pray to God the Father. Gracious God, we humbly thank you for life and health and safety, for freedom to work, leisure to rest, and for all that is beautiful in creation and human life. But above all, we praise you for our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for his death and resurrection, for the gift of your spirit, and for the hope of sharing in your glory. In our world changed by corona pandemic, we remember as we meet together online, our families, neighbours and friends, our church family, the vulnerable and the fearful. Fill the hearts of all who call on the name of the Lord and grant us peace in believing through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first song has got many variations around the world. It's, it's attributed to St Francis of Assisi and uh, we're going to enjoy singing and we're being led today by uh, Connie, uh, sorry, by Lois and Kathy, and uh, we enjoy singing this one. Let them sing along. Um, I know the chorus is really well on this, so let's see how we all go. Thank you. Praise our God, the creator of all heaven and all earth. All creatures of our God and King. Thank you. 
worship Him in humbleness. Oh, praise Him. Hallelujah. Praise, praise the Father, praise the Son. Praise the Spirit, three in one. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him. sentence set for this Sunday in the church year from Matthew chapter 10 verse 39. Those who find their life will lose it and those who lose their life for Jesus' sake will find it. And the prayer of the day from our collection of prayers. Let us pray. Gracious God, we who were baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death. We pray that as you raised him from death, so by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may live the new life to your glory, knowing ourselves to be dead in sin, but alive for you in Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our worship team on song are going to take us again into uh, the song Amazing Love. My Lord, what love is this? Thank you. As we prepare our hearts for worship, I just wanted to be reminded of the words in the book of Ephesians. How wide and how long and high and deep is the love of Christ. To know that this love surpasses knowledge and that we may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Let us come to God. We can ask, and He can do so much more than we can ever imagine. Let us sing of this amazing love. i 
standing at home for that prayer and praise. Please be seated as we come together now for the next section of our service, the ministry of the word. Let me pray uh, for this, the readings by Susie and Lois and indeed for Dietrich as he comes to speak to us. Thank you, Father, for making yourself known to us and showing the way of salvation through faith in your Son. We ask you now to teach us and encourage us through your word so that we may be ready to serve you for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Sorry. The first Bible reading comes from Romans chapter 5, verse 14 to 19. Death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for if the many died through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of the one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses trespasses brings justification. If because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. Hear the word of the Lord. And our second Bible reading this morning also comes from the book of Romans, chapter 6, verses 1 to 11. What then are we to say? 
Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we, so we, too, might walk in newness of life. For if we have been unified, if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also might consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me add my welcome to you this morning. If you're watching live and joining us in worship, um, thank you, Reverend Goodluck, for reminding us that um, not everyone is watching live. Our YouTube usually takes at least a day to upload. If you're watching this the day after, my name's Dietrich, and thank you for having me. Thank you so much. I know we're going through a hard time, but not once have I taken my opportunity to speak, to share God's word for granted. It's a privilege. I know um, uh, I'm doing a bit more than I would used to and also helping uh, all the team and Reverend Goodluck's doing two weeks and it's us. Hope you don't get sick of us. I know that on YouTube recently I have, um, if you don't like the message, you can give a dislike, okay? So recently I've had a few dislikes, but some people say it's okay. So um, it's only me um, and yes, thank you for this opportunity. I love this service, the prayer, praise, and proclamation, especially the first song, All Creatures of Our God and King. And especially that song because I chose that for the first song in our wedding, Lois and I's wedding, um, two years ago. And so it's, personally, it means a lot to me. And especially during this time of uncertainty, darkness, and now with uh, going back into restrictions, um, even more confusing times, especially for our plans anyway, for our ministry team. Well, yesterday I had a chance to go out. It was a beautiful day and I rode my bike along the Yarra River and it was just beautiful. And like the song says, uh, we should praise and all creation does um, testify to God's um, creation, to God himself, but also to his beauty. Now, today's message could be a bit heavy because I've called it um, life in death, okay? And I will talk about a heavy topic, death, because that's what I think this passage is talking about, what Paul is saying in our series that we're starting in Romans. Um, I'll be looking at chapter 6, 1 to 11, if you have your Bibles and want to follow along. Um, but uh, as Michael's also put uh, chapter 5 and 14 to 19 as the first reading, I'll kind of refer to that too. Now, like I said, a bit of a heavy topic, as you can tell from PowerPoint. I've got a bit of black there, but a kind of nice painting there as well. Life and death. Death and life. They seem like opposites, don't they? But today my main idea is actually... It's a paradox that there actually is life in death. Death, which is so um, scary and something that we don't want, we want to go as far as possible as we can, that we don't want to talk about. We avoid. That's in our culture, any culture. We don't like, who, who likes it? And actually, I'll start with this. Um, 
And just a disclaimer, if any of the stories that I use, and as I talk about death, I know it's a sensitive thing. I don't want to just mention it lightly. Um, so again, if you don't like it, give me a dislike um, on the comments below or give me a call. I I'm sorry if this is sensitive to you, but I want to talk about it. Let me share about a story. Um, do you know this it was, it was on the news recently? Um, so do you know the story of Madeleine McCann? Um, I guess many would because I think this, this case has been going on for a long time. And the case is like this, very simply put, um, if you look at the screen there, it's a beautiful girl and like gorgeous young, but she's from England and she was missing from 2007 when their parents took her to a holiday in Portugal and she's been missing since. And so it's one of, actually, it is the most widely reported missing persons case ever. Now, I wondered a lot about this because there's actually many, many missing cases and unsolved kind of disappearances. But I wonder what makes this one so famous and popular. And I couldn't get around as many documentaries and books and many theories about what happened in this mystery disappearance. And one of the reasons... Um, is that a lot of people might have suspect even the parents have killed her, their own daughter. And it's quite hor horrifying to think about. But I think many of the reasons is just look at this gorgeous, beautiful, cute girl. And so I've been following this kind of, you know, just the, the news. There was a documentary on Netflix about it. But recently, on top of everything that's been happening around the world, and I think this is like the cherry on top, there was a report that the original person that did capture her um, has been caught and there's evidence that she's been dead. She's been found dead, which is um, not too shocking considering how long she's been gone. But when you look at this innocent, young pure girl, and you think of the parents during that moment of despair, I can't even imagine it. Um, it would have been so hard. But to know that She's no longer here. She's not physically alive. But when you look at that life there and that photo, she looks like she's full of life. But no, she's been dead since maybe earlier than two, as early as 2007. So she's been dead for a long time. So there's a paradox there. Even when you look at something, there's life. I mean, when something that looks like there's life, there is death. And death and life, like I said, is closer um, than you think. And so in my first uh, point, life in death, our world now is face to face with death. It's breathing down our necks everywhere. Like I said, on top of the news, on top of all the things with the virus. And you heard about the race riots and you've heard about the man, George Floyd, an African-American man who was killed by the um, policeman um, because of racism. He was a fine line. One moment he was alive, a second moment he's death, dying. And for once, I want to talk about it openly, directly. I know it's in our culture not to talk about it, but the Bible does talk about it and it gives us a solution. But you see, the pandemic has shown us one thing, that we can remind ourselves that we, are not, we don't live forever. Death is a real part of Life, life and death. And it goes hand in hand. Have you ever thought that um, you can die at any moment? And that you will die one day? Um, I know you might not believe in what we call the Grim Reaper, but everyone has a time. Um, there's a joke, I guess, and that says like, you know, people arguing black lives matter and white lives matter is like that argument. But the Grim Reaper says, no lives matter. One day we will die. And just let that sink in. We don't think about it, especially when I was a bit younger. Um, for the youth, they probably don't because we've got so much life ahead of us. But some of us who are a bit more um, in the later stages of our life will realize we are fragile people. Whether it's pandemic or our physical condition, some of us have some sicknesses, the protests which make us feel unsafe or wars that are ongoing. What about a, a spiritual and, and mental condition called depression? I think that's also quite close to death because a lot of people struggle with it to the point of even ending their own lives. I put racism there, but basically death surrounds us in all 
forms. And for once, I think we're face to face with death. It is breathing down our neck. And the Bible reminds us that death is our ultimate enemy. And so I just want to pause here and acknowledge that some of us have a fear. We might not have um, ever been faced, we've never confronted this fear. But like I said, there is life in death. And I can't talk about life. I can't talk about the gospel that we have unless I talk about death. Bible talks about death. And indeed, the message is so simple. Reverend Goodlucks mentioned and reminded us last week that we have peace and, and life and grace because of Jesus' death. You know that. But for once, have you come face to face with realizing our own um, mortality? Well, I have. And, and I like to ride my bike. And one day I was going down Man, down Dandenong and it was, it was quite fast descending, maybe like 40, 50 Ks per hour. And cars were just brushing f past me. And I thought, you know, in any moment, I could die. I could get hit by a car. Um, I know I keep talk I've talked about this a lot, but my main point here is that unless we have these things to remind me around the world, then we forget. The Bible has actually given us an explanation for all this. And yes, we may be scared, but in another sense, God has an answer for this. It's not death isn't the end. We can talk about it in light of God's promise. But also another point is this. Because in our Western culture, so much we, we forget, um, we don't want to talk about it. If you've ever been to a funeral, you know, we want to get it over and done with as soon as possible and don't talk about it and you know, bury the body. But um, C.S. Lewis reminds us in a book called Screw Tape Letters, um, where an, a devil tries to trick a human, it's a fictional book, very good, that he wants to trick the human by reminding them that we're just physical beings. Well, Romans, this great letter, this rich letter from Paul, reminds us this spiritual truth as well, that we're not just physical beings. Okay, so Screwtape writes to um, the the devil and says, remind them that they're just a physical being. Well, the truth is, we're both a physical being and a spiritual being. And unless we talk about death and life, then we'll forget that we have a, a whole new dimension, a completely um, different world that we live in as Christians. And the answer to that, that we've read in the passages in chapter 5 and 6, is that we are now hidden in Christ. Our life is in Christ, that we're spiritual beings as much as we are physical beings. And as much as we can't see a physical Christ with us today, we're with Him. And just as Christ has died, we've died with Him. Just as Christ has lived, we live with Him. And my main point here is that we have to know our spiritual life. We don't think about it when we don't um, think about it. So in a, in a sense... What's happening around us can be a good thing, can be a reminder. And if you are close and facing death, let's have a conversation. Let's talk about it, have a pastoral conversation between Michael, Ben, or myself. And my promise is I'll hear you, but remember, God has an answer for this. And that is this spiritual reality. Like I said, um, Romans can be quite a hard book, quite complicated, but I'll try to keep that there is two um, ways that we can approach life and death. You can stay in death because everyone is in this. Because through Adam came sin, and in sin there came death. Death comes because of sin. And sin came into the world through Adam, and we're all originally through Adam. But the good news is that God gave us life um, in a new Adam. I wrote in Adam there, but I meant originally in Adam, and Adam lost that. And so this idea that Jesus has come again as a second Adam means that he actually restarted humanity altogether. When we say Adam, it means that in the line of Adam, who Adam represented. Now, by default, we're all in 
Adam. And that is why in chapter 14, the passage that Sue read, death reigned from Adam to Moses. That is even before the time of the law. But after Moses, when the law came, sin revealed, um, sorry, the law revealed sin even more. Now that sounds really, really complicated. I know it's really, really confusing at times. But the main point is when we talk about death, and when we talk about the um, physical condition of death, we've got to remember it's actually a spiritual reality. There's a lot going on. Death has been a curse from the very start because of our sin. And the law reveals this sin to us. Who here can say that we do not have sin? Because the law can constantly confronts us and reminds us. And the illustration that I was taught wonderfully when I was at Christian Union is that you can be speeding down, as some of us do, down the road. And sometimes there'll be a speed sign to tell you. Sometimes you may even get caught by a camera or a, um, a policeman. Um, whether you get caught by the law, you know, by that speeding sign or by a policeman, if you're speeding, then you're speeding. If there is sin, then there is sin. But what the law does is that it's like an x-ray machine. It reveals the sin. And that's what, I guess, all of the law, not just the Ten Commandments, but all of the law reminds us, the prophets as well. Nonetheless, our final sentence is death. All of us is death. And so our death is actually justified. But the good news, and if this is the first time you're ever hearing this, let me keep it very simple, is that in Jesus, you have a new life, a second chance, and you don't have to do anything to earn this. You just have to believe. And so my second point, it's a bit long, first point, but second point here, and I want to really use a picture to demonstrate that, is that Jesus gives you a new life. And that is through baptism. But I love this picture. You know, I was just reading quite last minute there, this technical term of baptism. I know from being in Bible college that a lot of churches and denominations will have different um, theologies or different understandings and debate about the um, specifics of baptism. But I really like this phrase. Um, it's from a friend's Chinese name. It was translated to English. She's a musician. Um, and her Chinese name is soaked in grace, soaked in grace. Now, baptism traditionally is uh, a ritual or rite. Um, in our church, we call it a sacrament. One of the two very important holy sacraments or means of grace that reminds us of God's promise to us. The other being holy communion, something that we really miss. And hopefully we can have a conversation about what we're going to do about that later. But I want to talk about baptism today. Uh, many of you Christians who are listening to this would have been baptized. And if you're baptized like me in the Anglican church, you have a symbol of water on your head, um, sprinkling, or some of you have gone uh, into immersion. Well, I'm not an advocate of full immersion, but the symbol of being soaked in grace is so powerful for me. You know the story is that the, Jesus died for, your, for you. But have you ever thought that in baptism, it's actually a double illustration. When you go down into the water and you're immersed into it, you die with Christ. And in dying with Christ, as the passage in chapter 6 reminds us, that you also die in your sin. All of you is dead. Dead is dead. If we know anything about death, it means it's final. It's over. Who you were, you were no longer. The power of death is defeated in that moment, as is the power of sin. And that, does, that illustration doesn't end there. Just as Christ was risen, you, raise with, you rise with Him. He died for us so that you can live for Him. And so the illustration of you know, immerse, Im, um, rising uh, from the water, emerging, um, if you've been, you know, have the privilege of being baptized uh, by full immersion. I haven't, um, so I'd, I, have, I don't really know this experience, but I've seen many people do it. And now I really understand this. What the commentary I read says is a double illustration, okay? So you die, you go in the water, and then you come up. It also means you rise. 
It doesn't end with just dying. As you rise with Him, you are rise, raised with Christ and you are a completely new person. Now, I want to make, want to make a very, very clear point, a uh, careful point here, there. Like I said, we have the two sacraments. Holy Communion is very powerful because it reminds believers of the promise that we have, and we long for it. I feel like I'm missing something without Holy Communion. But in this moment, how much does baptism mean for us, for our church? Um, and so for three groups, for those of us who are baptized, can I remind you, um, to be in this, I mean, we only baptize once, but soaked in grace, that imagery that forever you are always with Christ, you're right, raised with Him. And what that means practically is that, yes, um, death is defeated, so is the power of sin. Sin will remain, but we're not to live in it anymore. Now, there is a group of people who believe they've come to church for a long time, but they've not yet been baptized. Now, all I can say to you is that Yes, you, it's enough to be saved, but the symbol of baptism, when we can, um, we have a new pool. Um, you can't really see it there, but uh, Pastor Ben and the team have, have, have invested in an actual baptismal pool. Think about it. You have a lot of time to think and pray, talk to someone about it, consider it, because in this outward sign, you're showing an inward reality, and, specific, and more importantly, you're allowing people to share in this spiritual truth, and we will celebrate with you. There's probably nothing more joyful uh, for a minister to do than to celebrate baptism. And finally, for those who don't understand what any of this is about, you're not a Christian today, well, I would like to share a bit more why you should get baptized. And the reason ultimately is um, because we have a new life. It's no longer death. It's no longer darkness in, the, in my PowerPoint. Uh, it's this weird kind of blue color, which I guess represents life, water, alive, soaked in grace. How amazing we are. And now you know this truth, but do you live in it? Um, this may sound a bit rude, but the Greek translation of by no means, very strong in um, verse 2, Greek meganoito is a very strong um, tone, an imperative. Uh, some people like to use this translation. I really like it. It's hell no. Should I continue in my sin? Do you continue in your sin? This very week, wherever you are, hell no. Well, I for one have struggled. I do struggle. We all struggle still with sin and sin will not um, go away in our mortal bottle in bodies, unfortunately, until Jesus redeems them fully. But shall we continue to go in on sin? Or in put in another way, should we abuse God's grace and take it for granted? No way. And this is how you know you have a new life. You have a new life when you have a, a new desire, a new heart, when you long for something else, when you know you're a new being. And so my challenge and reflection is this. Even if you have been baptized before, if you still wrestle and struggle with sin, and don't get me wrong, there's a difference between wrestling and struggling, but if sin still has a bondage over you, and if your heart isn't wanting to please God, um, then I'll ask some questions. It's not my place to judge, you know, where you are with God. But the only real baptism that we have, not just the, spirit, the physical baptism, but the spiritual baptism is that we have a new heart, what we call re regeneration. And put simply, it's a new desire. I don't want to live like I did before. I don't want to be that person that, that was before. That's why I died. And that's why I want to live again with Christ. He lives in us. And there's a lot of mysteries. And, and this is why, you know, it would be great if we can have a Bible study and talk about this in detail. But basically, the Holy Spirit has given you a new life. And you're a different person. And you may not um, look it, and you may not feel it even, but you are. 
Um, so in conclusion, I want to do something a little bit differently today. I know um, Jennifer's not here, uh, but um, uh, Jennifer and Sarah once asked me, what do you guys do for your Chinese worship service? Uh, are your songs like ours? I thought about that for a long time, and I said, hmm, I don't think so. <laughs> no, the language is different, but also the music style is a bit different. I don't think it's um, better, but it's just different, or it's a Chinese worship song. So... I want to conclude by sharing this Chinese worship sh song, which I made an effort to try to learn the first line of. Um, um, so th the song is called, actually, I actually don't know what it's called in English, but in Chinese it's called Ili Maizu. And so um, the song that I want to share is called Ili Maizu. And so uh, Ili Maizu means a um, seed of wheat, I think, of rice. Uh, you can correct me later. But basically, this song is very poetic, okay? So you, you can relate to this song because it's wheat, and in Australia, there's a lot of farmers who grow wheat. But basically, you see on the side there, there are some seeds. And so this song called Ili Mides is all about one single seed. And it says, um, one single seed, unless it goes into the ground, okay, and dies, no matter how long time goes by, it will still just remain itself, okay? Ili um, Maizu. And so it's a very simple idea, but it's a very powerful idea. And so that what it's actually saying is that the seed actually has to die before it can live. And if you understand anything about growing things and, and plants, it has to die before it has to grow. And so as I play this song, I invite this time now for a, a reflection. Those of you, us who who want to live this new life because I think it's a very powerful time right now. It's a powerful time during this pandemic. Um, I want to share that, as you can see here in the memorial garden, right here is a paradox. There is death, yes, in the memorial garden, but there is also life. And Christians now in this pandemic have a chance to go back to our main core business, which is to make disciples. That is our core business. And I, I don't want to settle for us just to doing church every single week, the same thing over and over again. Yes, it's nice. Um, even as an Anglican, we have all these nice liturgies and dress up and, and um, formalities. Um, I like this song, Ili Maizu, because it talks about a harvest one day that is more than you can ever imagine. And it's a Chinese song, so I want to invite especially the St. Mark's people who don't understand to know that what we're on about here at St. Tim's is a great mission. We're sowing the seeds um, for the future. And there's a lot of businesses um, that have adapted in the pandemic. Do you know that many clothing camp companies and car manufacturing companies have started to make masks? Some alcohol companies have started to make hand sanitizer. McDonald's, if you don't know, has begun to sell milk and bread. And Christians have one job. Our business is not to do all these things, you know, our business is, is life. We're in the business of life. We tell people about life. And the biggest thing is actually, church has never stopped. I try to make disciples. I try to talk to people. We try to meet up in our house. We don't give up because church has never stopped. Actually, in this time is our only challenge time to, to realize our core business. And that is life. As simple as that, we're in the business of life. And so as we look, look at this memorial garden, I thank God for St. Tim's. I thank God for all the lives in this memorial garden. But I especially thank God for this baptismal pool that one day, many, many people will, will come and be saved.
I'm sure those of us that share that same heart say amen to Dietrich and, uh, and to that, that wonderful gospel message. If you're looking at behind in this memorial garden that uh, Dietrich is saying, below the communion table, it's in the screen, you can see what might look like a mighty old rock, but it's actually a canvas over that baptism fall. So you actually can see it, um, what we're talking about. And of course, right behind me is the, the cross of Christ. And my goodness, what a, what a powerful symbol. We're going to affirm the faith of the church. We've used this simple affirmation from the prayer book a couple of times now. Uh, again, please feel free to, to join in with me in that which we do believe, in that which we stand, that which gives us hope against the enemy. That uh, I just loved how Dietrich reminded us of that. That, that. that scripture tells us that the last enemy to be defeated is death, but defeated it is. And this is why. Together, let's say, we believe in one God who made and loves all that is. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was born, lived, died and rose again and is coming to call all to account. We believe in the Holy Spirit who calls, equips and sends out God's people and brings all things to their true end. This is the faith of the church. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our third song this morning is the, the, the great classic, Be Thou My Vision. Let God help us see beyond this earthly life, beyond death to the glory of forever and eternity with him. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Thank you. I just invite everybody just to have a reflection as I play the introduction of what um, uh, Deidre has preached before. God be our vision.
the wages of sin is death. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. We come to confess our sins. From the Old Testament prophet Joel, a word. Return to the Lord your God, who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. So friends, we confess our sins to our almighty God, praying, Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have broken your holy laws and have left undone what we ought to have done. We are sorry for our sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your Son, who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us, and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, God desires that none should perish, but that all should turn to Christ and live. In response to his call, we acknowledge our sins. God pardons those who humbly repent, who truly believe the gospel. Therefore, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And another scripture from Paul. God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Having prayed for ourselves in that way, let's now turn our prayers to prayers for others. The ministry of prayer. We pray indeed for the world and for the church. Loving God, Help us to daily grow in your likeness and in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Our loving God, we pray for our world, swamped by a pandemic that is killing tens of thousands, affecting hundreds of thousands, spreading around to each and to every continent and each and every nation within it. In this world situation of life and death, we are confronted again with choices. We pray for those in authority as they make the choices that help keep many lives safe. We pray too for the two superpowers of our present age. In the United States of America, they are going through an election cycle, ramping up the rhetoric. If they truly were to be the land of the free, help them, Lord, to so work in the world, their own nation and in the nations of the world, for good and for the God in whom their country says they trust. We pray for the other superpower of our present age. We pray for the nation of China, for the conflicts and the issues racking that country at this moment, and especially for those who have Hong Kong at their heart. We pray for that part of our world and the troubles there. We pray for the Black Lives Matter program, campaign and rightness that we are all loved by you, Heavenly Father. For violence where it erupts and injustice where it is found, we believing people pray, Holy Spirit, be at work, transform and change. For our nation, Australia, as we seek to look honestly and with integrity at the dark history of our past, 
and at the current situations and issues. We pray for those who at this time are struggling to recover from bushfires of six months ago. For those who face the problems of life and living through the issues of this pandemic. And for us here in Victoria, as we work as a people in cooperation with each other, in obedience to requirements that we hope, we pray, keep many safe and avoid unnecessary suffering and sorrow. For the implications for our churches, nonetheless, Lord God, be with us, we humbly pray. Indeed, loving God, help us to daily grow into your likeness and in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our communities, the city of Manningham, Greater Melbourne. We pray for our communities in our family life, for those whose loved ones are nearby and can have some connection and contact. May it be careful and helpful. And for those whose community of faith and family takes them across the globe, give them comfort, we pray, in this time of isolation. Loving God, help us to daily grow into your likeness and in your mercy, hear our yeah. prayer. We pray, Lord God, for your church. We pray for those in leadership that they would tackle with wisdom the ways forward to be church in this current age and in this immediate situation, as well as what we hope comes out the other side. I seek a prayerful blessing, Lord God, upon the meeting that uh, Vicar Ben and myself will have with our Archdeacon and with our Bishop tomorrow as we look at how we're travelling here in AIM in the west of Manningham. We pray for Tuesday's clergy meeting that Ben will be hosting as the, the, the vicars and, and ministers of parishes get online for fellowship and encouragement on our monthly meeting. Lord God, we pray for your church to be, take discerning steps forward, to build up faith, to proclaim Christ and to, to deepen our life with you. Bless Dietrich and Lois in their ministry with youth and with the, the older folk of the church that they have a, a pastoral heart and care for. Bless Ivy in her ministry with the Mandarin community and congregation here at St Tim's. And for Ben as he oversees that ministry. For the parish councils of both St Tim's and St Mark's. And for St Mark's food drive and other opportunities to help grow the faith, do the good work. Loving God, help us as a people of God to daily grow into your likeness and in your mercy hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And there are those for whom we pray, the sick and the needy. In each parish there are names that we have been remembering people we have been focusing on. Some of the names are members of our church and others are people that they know or family that they have and they seek the prayerful uplift that we raise to you, our Father God, through remembering them and we ask you to gaze upon them lovingly and, and help them appropriately. We especially remember those who find this isolation and the difference of it, so confusing or so draining as it goes week by week by week. Be with the sick and the needy, the elderly and the lonely. We thank you for those who care for them, for all primary health carers and responders. Loving God, help us to daily grow into your likeness and in your mercy, hear our yeah, prayer. prayer. And finally, Lord God, we pray that you would give us grace to follow the faithful departed, to be more like Jesus, 
and to trust you. Let us join together in the prayer which Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, Community Matters, we'll enjoy listening to Ben in a moment. Let me go first. At, at St Mark's, we have been doing um, a Bible study together in the hall for the last two weeks. And uh, that's going to be continuing because uh, the regulations and the, uh, that have come through, messages from our Archbishop, we can continue to have 20 people doing church uh, in church doing activity. So uh, the hall is actually able to take 18. And uh, that's our maximum number when we divide it by the four square metres. So Wednesday Bible study is continuing. The, but the implication for the church worship survey is still to be worked out. Next Saturday, there's an opportunity for us to once again donate perish uh, non-perishable foods to the work of St Mark's Fitzroy through Anglicare, an inner city Melbourne program that's going on there. So we ask that if you wish to make a donation, you can come to, uh, to the church, you can drop it off as people would, did last month. It's a monthly activity. It's this Saturday between 11 and 12. And uh, hopefully folks will get on board with that. Now, next Sunday, we're going to... I'm going to, to, to conduct the service. I'm leading the service next week and I'll be leading it in, in with the, the service of, of Holy Communion. We're going to do what's called a spiritual communion. And a spiritual communion means that, that we do the service here, but you join in at home. And when we come to the, the actual communion part, you have prepared something which you will drink and something which you will eat so that when I do the, the prayer, we'll be feeding on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving, as we say each and every time when we meet as a service. Next Saturday, at the food drop-off, I will have little wafers in a plastic bag for anybody who wishes to take that as their wafer, as their bread for the bread of communion. You don't have to do that. You can use um, your own bread, a biscuit. I've been in churches where they use rice crackers as their, as their communion bread each and every week. But you can participate that way and there will be wafers available next Saturday. So next Sunday morning service will be a spiritual communion. So that's something to, to look forward to for, for me to, to do that for a first time, but for all of us to, to have that aspect of worship next Sunday. Now, that's, a, that's really what I was trying to say. I do thank people that have updated me on the prayer points, as I asked for. It's so helpful to keep those names there. We've added a few names. God bless to, the, to, to those recovering, especially we remember you, Pauline, and pray for you and Trevor today. Happy wedding anniversaries this week to Keith and Margaret, 59 years, and in the in, beginning of next week, Ross and Yvonne, 62 years. Something is in the, in the water in June. Uh, well done to you. On our, on our prayer list, Shan, who is my niece, she had her first baby baptised at St Mark's, which was a lovely thing. They're believing people, Dietrich, and, and they really wanted to have that, that blessing upon their child. Shan is um, uh, scheduled to, to give birth to her second child tomorrow, so they've been on our prayer list for some time. Ben, please, I know we're, we're, reining, we're ranging in the time here. Come on over and bring us uh, your good news. Thank you, Michael. Uh, welcome again. Welcome to our online live streaming service, or as Michael said, maybe you're not watching online, maybe a few hours or a day or two later. Anyway, welcome. My name is Ben Wong, and I'm the vicar of St. Timothy's uh, Anglican Church in Bulin. Well, I've only got one thing that I want to tell you. Last Monday, 
at our council meeting, we talk about reopening the church, uh, well, talk about the protocols and uh, time. It was decided that we would reopen the church on Thursday, the 16th of July, morning at 10 a.m. to start a midweek service. We may not be able to start with any singing due to the risk of airborne hygiene. It would be a very simple, quiet service to start with. As for Sunday mornings, we will still continue our online service as what you know, what you're watching now. And so if you would like to come to church for a face-to-face -face service and communion, you are very welcome on start from 16th of July. But if you don't feel like you are ready, you can continue to join us online on Sundays. Or you can do both. So this is what we have planned. But as we know now, uh, this weekend our Victoria State had uh, 20 plus new cases nearly every day, which um, is a very difficult time. And our government has now gone back to the restrictions we had four weeks ago. So over the coming weeks, we will be able to know whether we can still go ahead with our plan. So I will keep everyone updated. We still got a month that you know we can wait and see. But if uh, we can still get uh, 20 people at church, I think we might continue having a small service for the people, especially for some who are not able to join us online. They can you know, physically come to church. So well, let's continue to pray for this uncertain situation and pray for each other's health and well-being, especially for those that are facing some great challenges at the moment. May God give us the peace we need and the forever hope in him. Well, that's all from me. So, well, I'll pass over to Michael. <laughs> well, we're bringing the service to its conclusion with our final hymn and, and our, our blessings prayers. The song is about Jesus, and it's called The Spirit Song by uh, John Wimber. Spirit of 
Let him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. Oh, let him have those things that hold you with his spirit like a dove. Will descend upon your life and make you. Click it on for us and we'll uh, go to the next screen if we've got our clicker. Loving God, thank you for hearing our prayers, feeding us with your word, encouraging us as we meet together in an online community. Together, take us and use us to love and serve you and all people in the power of your spirit and in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, may the God of peace equip you in everything good for doing his will, working in you what is pleasing to him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.